Hello and welcome back to CS11. This is a solution for the second part of Lab 14b, which is to write a magic square checker. A magic square is an n by n grid of values where every row, column, and diagonal add up to the same value. Okay, now this is the most complex program we've written so far, and so we're going to be able to create a solution much more efficiently if we spend some time planning the program out on paper first. One of the things that I like to do when I'm working on a program is make a list of all of the tasks that that program is going to have to perform. And then I can decide how I'm going to split those tasks up into various portions of the programs, typically functions. So I can use my task list to figure out which functions I'm going to need. Now, the list of tasks can be exhaustive. For example, I may want to list that I'm going to need to input 16 integers store them in a 2D array, and so on. But I prefer to just list the primary serious tasks in there. So, you know, I don't have to put in here in this list, you know, halt the program when, when it's done, or, you know, things like that. So I want to just focus on the primary tasks. And so what I'm going to need to do is make sure that the values 1 through 16 each happen once, and that no values except 1 through 16 are, are input. So that is going to make sure that we have a valid candidate for a magic square. After we do that, then what we need to do is find the sum of the, each row, and we need to find the sum of each column, and the sum for both of the diagonals. And then we have to make sure that not only does each of the row sums equal each of the other row sums, and so on, but then we have to make sure that they together are all equal. Okay, so those are the primary tasks that I need to complete. Now how am I going to divide them up? Well, I like to sketch out a picture. It looks a little bit like a flowchart where I draw a box for each of my functions and make a little note to myself what the function is going to do and draw some lines or arrows to show how they're going to be connected. So starting with my main function, which is going to handle the input and output, and then that function is going to call a second function, which I'll call is board legal. And between these two functions, I want to handle these two validation tasks. So my main program, when it's receiving the input and storing them in a 2D array, can make sure that every value that you've input comes in the range of 1 through 16. But more serious checking, for example, say to make sure that you didn't enter the number 15 twice, is going to be handled in board legal. Then, once main has called isBoardLegal and use that function to determine that the magic square only has the values 1 through 16 with each number occurring once, it's then going to call a function called isMagicSquare, which is going to return true or false depending on whether or not the value is in a magic square. And in order for that function to do its work, it, in turn, is going to call three other functions. One that handles the rows, one that handles the columns, and one that handles the diagonals. And what these functions are going to do is return the sum of one of the rows if all the rows are the same. Otherwise, it's going to return negative one. The column function is going to check the sums of each of the column, and if they're the same, it will return the sum, otherwise it will return negative 1. And likewise, the diagonal function will check the two diagonals, and then return negative 1. And the magic square function will then make sure that you haven't returned a value of negative 1 for many of these, and that, that the value that's returned from each is the same, and if so, then it returns that you have a magic square, 
Otherwise, it returns that you do not have a magic square. Now, one more thing that we need to do before we start coding is do a quick review of the syntax for two-dimensional arrays. So if you're in a function such as main and want to declare an array, you need to give the type and the name of the array, just as with a one-dimensional array, but then you need to give two dimensions. So for example, four by four. And this will create an array that has rows and columns. To pass it to a function, just as with a single dimensional array, you give just the name of the array, and that passes the entire two-dimensional array here. So here, if I wanted to call a function foo and pass this array, I can do it just by name. Then, in function foo, where you're receiving the board as a parameter, you also have to give a type and a name to your parameter. But then, unlike with passing single-dimensional arrays, you need to give the dimensions. So this function here is a function that specifically can receive an array of dimensions 4 by 4 and not any arbitrary size array. So there's that little bit of syntactic difference when you are passing a two-dimensional array. Within, to get to a particular spot in the array, you give both its row and column that you want to access. And just as within a single dimensional array, the indexes start at zero. So zero through three would be the range of values that we could use in that board. So we've come up with a plan and we've reviewed the syntax for 2D arrays. And now we'll take a look at a solution. This is a longer program than we've written before, so I'm not gonna type it in front of you. And instead, I've already uploaded the program called magicsquare.cpp to our lecture and lab video section. So let's look at each of the major pieces of the program that I wrote there and talk our way through it. First of all, rather than coding my program to only work with four by four magic squares, I created a variable called size. It's initially set to four, but theoretically I could change that to different values to allow for different sizes of magic squares. Then I created a second constant called entries that's equal to size times size, and that tells you how many total entries a magic square of that size would have. Um, I've made these global constants because I make use of them throughout the program. All right, let's take a look at the main function, which is here at the bottom. And in main, I create a two-dimensional array, size by size, that's going to hold my candidate magic square values, a little bit of output, and I tell the user to enter values between 1 and 16. Then I use a nested for loop to iterate through the rows and columns of that array to read in one integer at a time for each of those 16 positions. And if any one of the values that the user inputs is not in the range of 1 through 16 in this case, then the program prints an error message to see error, which is like see out, except it's for error messages, and I use the command exit1 to halt the program. Otherwise, I assign the value that they've input to the next row and column position in the board. So this loop here handles the input. Then I check to see if the board is legal or not, and that's to make sure that each of the values 1 through 16 occurs only once. And if so, I print out that the board is legal. Otherwise, I output that the board is not legal and halt the program. Lastly, if the board was legal, we'll get down here. I check my call my is magic square function, which is a Boolean function. So it's going to return true or false, just like is board legal, and then print out that it's a magic square or not a magic square. And then that's the end of the program. Let's take a look at the is board legal function. The purpose of the isBoardLegal function is to make sure 
that each of the values, 1 through 16, occur only once. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, one way to do that would be to take each value and compare it to each other value to make sure that there's no duplicates, and so on. So here are all the comparisons just to check that that first square doesn't equal any of the others. That's a lot of work. What I decided to do was to do the compar comparison using a different technique. I made an array of size 17, or 16 plus 1, so that I could have positions 1 through 16 in my array with a zero spot that's unused. This is the array here that I called board check. Then I went through the board and for each value incremented the corresponding spot in the array. For example, if when I was looking through the board, if I saw a 4, then I went to position 4 and incremented the 0 that was initially there to a 1. And then if I see a 5, I go to position 5 and increment to 1. So each position in the board gets voted for in here. And then, when I've voted for each of the positions in here, I go through this array, and if any value isn't 1, then I'll know that there was something wrong with the arrangement of values. If they were all 1, then I know that each value appeared once. And so that's the isBoard legal function. That's probably the trickiest of all of the functions uh, in this program. OK, let's look back at main. And the next call is to the isMagicSquare function, which is here. So in the isMagicSquare function, I call my other three functions to get the sum of the rows, columns, and diagonals. And then I check the value returned by the row sum to see if it's negative 1. And if it is, then I know I don't have a magic square, and I return false. Otherwise, I'll return this equation here, which is going to be either true or false. And it's true if the rows and columns are equal and the columns and diagonals are equal. Now I had to check to see if it was negative 1 first because what if they all returned negative 1? I wouldn't want to say I had a magic square if I didn't. So I checked the row first. So if the row isn't negative 1 and all three of these values are the same, I'll return true. Otherwise, I'll return false. Okay, let's take a look at the row sum function. This one is typical of the three functions, so I'll only look at this one. I won't review the column or diagonal function. Okay, so here I get passed in a board, and here I'm going to create two variables, first row sum and other row sum. And here I use a loop to sum together the values of the entire first row. So the row here is 0, so that will be here, this row here, and then the columns are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So to get all of those values, then here I use this for loop here. And so first row sum will be the sum of all of those values. Then I want to check the sum of each subsequent row. So I'll get the sum of that row this row and this row, and I want to make sure that the, whatever sum that I got for this first row is equal to the sums that I got for those rows too. So that's what this portion of the code does. Here I set other row sum initially to be 0, and then other row sum will be the sum first of this row, and then in later iterations of the loop it'll be the sum of this row and the sum of this row. After I've completed the sums of one of the rows, I then check to see if the sum I got is different than the sum I had for the first row, then I know they're not all the same, and I return negative 1. But if they match, then I keep going. 
And if I've checked all of them and none of them disagreed, then I get to the end of my function and I return the sum of the first row, which, if they're all equal, would be the sum of any one of the rows. If I had gotten a mismatch at any point, then I would have returned negative one. This is the standard way to check the truth or falseness of any compound expression. So anything that's made up of multiple pieces, the way you check to see if two things are equal is to look for a counterexample. And if you find a counterexample, return false. And only if you fail to find a counterexample do you return true. That's what I've done here. I looked for any row that didn't match, and if I found a row that didn't match, I returned negative 1. And if I failed to find any row that didn't match, then at the end, I know they're all equal. Okay, well that's a tour of our sample solution for Lab 14B Part 2.